This is niboshi. These dried fish are one of the most commonly used ingredients in making ramen, but for most of us outside of Japan, they're very hard to find. Turns out, they're actually not so hard to make yourself, so I'm going to show you two methods to do that today. So before we get into making niboshi, let's take a closer look at exactly what niboshi is. The most common variety of niboshi is made using this guy, the Japanese anchovy, but there are no rules when it comes to what kind of fish you can use. As you can see here, there's flying fish, herring, horse mackerel, all being used and dried. I wanted to point out that even the word niboshi has no reference to fish at all. It comes from the method that's used to make it rather than the ingredients. So now that we know that, let's get into making some niboshi. I'm going to use this local fish called wama that my dad caught this morning. Any small fish that isn't super oily should work. People on the Discord server have had success with smelt or sardines, so just use whatever you can get. The first method we're going to try comes from a Japanese blog that was recommended to me on Discord by Elvin. We're going to start off pretty traditional here and heat up some salted water. The salt content of the water should be 3.5% to mimic ocean water, so I'm adding about 52 grams of sea salt into 1.5 liters of water. And once that water is simmering, just drop your fish in, guts and all, and simmer them for 4-5 to five minutes. If any scum starts to come up, you can skim that off. And after 4-5 to five minutes, you can gently lift the fish out of the water. Try not to break them, because when you pull them out, they're going to be very brittle at this point. Traditionally, you would then take these fish and dry them in the shade for 4 or 5 days with a fan on them, but ain't nobody got time for that these days. So this recipe on this blog actually tested out using an oven instead, and said that this method with the oven actually produced a better quality niboshi at home. So you're just going to carefully lay out your fish on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. And then you're going to take that and put that in an oven that was preheated to 248 degrees Fahrenheit, or 120 degrees Celsius, for 90 minutes. After 90 minutes, check your fish if they're done. Smelt, for example, should be done by this time, but check them to see if they're fully desiccated. Mines were not fully dried at this point, so if that's the case, you can put them back into the oven and then check them periodically until you can snap them in half. The biggest indicator on whether or not they're done is the smell. It should have a pleasantly nutty fishy smell. It shouldn't stink at all. If you've ever smelt real niboshi, you kind of know the smell. But that's method one. The appearance of the final product isn't as pretty as store-bought niboshi, but it has the right texture, aroma, and flavor. Fishy with a fish taste. Overall, a great end result. The second method we're going to test out is from Michael Perez, a chef in Spain who developed his own method to mimic niboshi with local fish from his area. The two major differences for this method is we're going to descale and clean the fish. You don't need to do this for the Japanese method, and the reason you need to do this is there's no boiling step in this method either. We're just going to put them right into the dehydrator at 140 degrees Fahrenheit or about 60 degrees Celsius overnight. So once the fish are clean, just line them up on the drying rack and they are good to go into the dehydrator. This technically is not niboshi since there's no simmering step, but I was interested to see if this could be used in a similar way to make dashi, to make nibo oil, etc, etc. When it was done, the noticeable difference was the texture of the meat, which was much more rubbery than real niboshi, and that's because it wasn't boiled for us, and so the meat had no time to firm up prior to trying. But I tested it out with some dashi, and it worked out really well. So there you go, two methods to make your own niboshi at home. Give them a try, and let me know what you think. As always, you can tag me on Instagram, at WaveRamen, show me your own homemade niboshi, or you can share your homemade niboshi on our Discord server, and help us learn what works and what doesn't. Link in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching and for all the support. It really is mind-blowing to me. We just passed 125,000 subscribers. Um, that's ridiculous. Thank you guys all so much. I'm completely humbled. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.